In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters crapping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy dumb. answer. One of the more fiery moments of tonight's debate. Welcome back to our coverage of the Republican presidential debate. I'm Tom Yamas. And I'm Hallie Jackson. We've got the candidates still making their way through their spin room here in Miami. Joining us now is somebody who was one of the biggest targets of the night, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. Ambassador Haley, thank you for being with us here. Thanks for having me. Listen, this debate was largely focused on foreign policy, but I have to start with that moment that we just saw. we got to start with scum and these attacks from Vivek Ramaswamy against you here. Can you take a minute to just reflect on that moment? Moment, what was going through your head and help us understand do you dislike him look I'm a mom I'm a mom so the second that you go and you start saying something about my 25 year old daughter I'm gonna get my back up but this is it's not even about the personal part there are serious differences that I have with him you know he doesn't think that we need to be helping Israel he sides with Putin and and thinks that Ukraine doesn't matter he's okay with giving Taiwan to China there's so many issues he doesn't think America needs friends. That's dangerous. I think he has a dangerous foreign policy um, that we can't afford, and I think he would make America less safe. He, he called you Dick Cheney in three inch heels. Do you think that was sexist? It, it, I don't even give him the time of day. He has proven that he is just not worthy of being president of the United States. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. There's so many things that he said that were just uncalled for tonight. But, you know, I'll let people decide that. We've got real serious issues. We've got to talk about what's happening. We've got wars all around the world. We've got an economy that's in shambles. We've got a border that's open. And we've got a lot of families that are concerned. And those those are the things that I wanted to talk about, not the fact that he got my heel size wrong. So let's talk about some of those issues here, including what we just heard from with our colleague Ryan Nobles, who is live in New Hampshire talking with voters there. I know you were listening when one of those voters talked about you and your answer as it relates to abortion access and what you would push for here. Um, you were, it seems, pushing the pragmatic in your response about what can actually get passed in Washington and what cannot. Do you believe that your competitors on stage are missing something in the dynamic here? Well, I think the fellas like deal with this differently. I look at it from the perspective that this is personal for every woman and every man in America. I had a roommate who was raped in college. I wouldn't wish on anyone what she went through wondering if she was pregnant, wondering if she was pregnant. What I'll tell you is I'm totally pro-life in every way whatsoever. I just don't judge someone for being pro-choice any more than I want them to judge me for being pro-life. So when you're looking at this, I don't want to see this divide. Women don't want to be divided over this. I want this in the hands of the people. I want it at the state's level. But if you're going to talk about a federal bill, at least be honest with the American people. Don't make them, you know, you've got Democrats making people feel scared that something's going to happen. And you've got Republicans trying to push something that's not even realistic. So I'll ask you the same question that I asked Governor DeSantis before you. Should Republicans even be pushing a federal bill at this point, in your view? I think we always want to save as many babies as we can and support as many moms as we can. And so I think the reason why I talked about consensus is let's see where we can get 60 Senate votes. Let's see, because anything would save more babies. It would do more. And so, and as we're seeing state laws, you know, come up, it's just like I said, we don't want to see a woman who gets an abortion get put in jail or get the death penalty. There's certain things that I think there's a place, but there has to be consensus if that's going to happen. Ambassador, let's turn to Israel and Hamas. You have been attacked for saying end Hamas. Former Governor Chris Christie says, what does that even mean? My question to you is this. Israel obviously suffered a horrific terrorist attack. Innocent Israelis were killed. They've been kidnapped, likely being tortured in that tunnel system there in Gaza. Can you destroy Hamas without destroying Gaza? Essentially, is there any way to do this without all those innocent Palestinians now dying as well? Look, I mean, we've always focused on civilians versus terrorists. I think that's important. That's what America does. That's what Israel does. That's what civilized countries do. But the reality is, if 1,400 Americans had been brutally murdered that way and Americans taken hostage, would America be okay with that? We would not be okay with that. What we have to remember is, here you had 1,400 people, but we had 33 Americans that were murdered. We have a 
Americans being held hostage. This is not just personal for Israel, it's personal for America. And so when you look at that, we have to eliminate Hamas. I dealt with this every day. What I can tell you is Israel is not going to do this without thinking of every single human so, life. The problem is Hamas does not think of every single human life. I've been in those tunnels, yeah. and those tunnels are underneath hospitals, they're underneath playgrounds, they're underneath schools, because they use women and children as human shields. The best way to save people in Gaza is to eliminate Hamas, because they should not live under so that no rule So no ceasefire, no humanitarian pause. You would not encourage that. You would not fight for that if you were president right now. If you do a pause, if you do a ceasefire, people die. Because we've done this before. And what Hamas did before, they killed Israeli soldiers and they took more Israeli soldiers hostage. That's what would happen. They refuel to try and get ready so they can shoot more rockets. What they need to do is they need to let out every hostage they have. And we're not going to talk to them until they release every single one of those hostages. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, thank you so much for your time here after this third Republican presidential primary debate. Appreciate you being with us. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.